Hey guys, Stoopy here. So in today's video, we're finally getting to make my full guide for Feldred Dragonflight in Season 1. The season's arriving just now, so it's time to uh, dive into it. In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know uh, for Feldred PvP. We're going to go over, I should have a little list there uh, that I can look at so I don't miss anything. So we're going to cover talents, we're going to go over the single target build, the cleave build, and kind of like when to use what, uh, and also like the variance of these builds, because there's going to be uh, slight variance that might change certain talents for certain matchups. Uh, then we cover honor talents, uh, and also like when, when to pick what. Uh, we're going to have gear, so your stats, crafted piece, gems, enchants, all that stuff. And then we're going to go into the rotation, so your opener, then your base rotation, and how it's going to lead into the first go, the first go after the opener. Then some general tips and tricks, and then to finish it off with uh, me suggesting some comps that you guys can try out that I think will be really good in uh, Season 1. So, let's dive into it. So even though Dragonflight's out, we've got some amazing new zones. We're going to do this guide in the Dream Grove, because this is kind of where, where, where it's going on for us druids. Uh, but yeah, starting off, before we even dive into the actual builds, I kind of touch on one thing. That's kind of going to go throughout all the builds, and this is the, the, the choice of Cyclone. I get a bunch of questions about this too. Do we never go clone and stuff like this? And the short answer is, it depends on the matchup. You're playing, the comp you're playing, and the comp you're facing. And I'll give you some examples uh, ex examples of this. So, for example, if I'm playing Hunter Felger 2v2, I'm going to want clone. Because I, I can clone off traps, I, I can clone to peel, it's probably going to be very needed then. And it's going to be high value, right? So in that kind of comp, I'd play it. But if I'm, for example, playing uh, Affliction Warlock Felger, and we got Fair DR... We got dots ticking. There's no really point in cloning. Uh, then I'm not going to play clone. So there's going to be kind of like variants of uh, my build. Especially my single target build. Where it's going to be one with clone. And then one without clone. And uh, you know which one you play. It's going to depend a lot on the comp you're playing. Um, one more example for, for threes. Let's say you're playing jungle cleave 33. And your priest is going to get trained down by a melee cleave. right? And you really need clone to peel. Then you'll go clone. But if you're facing... Let's say uh, just a random comp like or like let's say Thundercleave, right? Like Warrior Ellie, Evoker Healer. Um, line of clones gonna be hard. They have grounding. They have wind shard. They like might not be be that the high value playing it, and you might just want to pump more uh, damage and and, and and focus on that and not spend too much time trying to like land CC and stuff. Then you won't play it. So it's gonna depend a lot on the matchup. That's the the general uh, point to kind of take away here. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, without further ado. Let's dive into like the actual build now uh, for the single target damage build. Okay, so for the single target build, I kind of want to put single target in quotations because there is no more draft of defocus. Is one of my favorite things about Dragonfly for Aldred, is that we're no longer kind of forced to go one target. We can cleave freely. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. Like this, this build is more single target heavy than the other build I'm, I'm going to show. Uh, but it's not. You're not, you're not forced to go one target, right? You can still cleave. You can still spread rake. You can spread rip. And it's probably a great benefit in doing that. So you just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah. So for the build, kind of what we're doing here is uh, skipping most of the cleave stuff. We're skipping Prime Wrath, skipping uh, Double Cloud Rake, Apex, Rampant Ferocity. And it's kind of like going more heavy on our single target damage. Um, one thing to kind of keep in mind is there is kind of one point that can be spent on different things there. And I, I, I say is this one. This one can be used... if. If you need more tankiness, right here, protective growth. Can even go for like Hardmore's instincts. I think Berserk Heart Line does have quite good value here uh, for this one extra point. So usually I probably put it here for now. Uh, but yeah, this one can can kind of be changed depending on the situation a bit. But yeah, so one big thing uh, that's different from Shadowlands, for example, is that we got BT and Frenzy and Moment at the same time. These three were on the same row before. But now we can get all three at the same time, which is pretty insane. So with this build, uh, our ghost will kind of be similar to before, where we have Fury, uh, Swarm, and Frenzy. So we're going to be like doing a go. We're going to go into ghosts later, by the way. Uh, you know, we're going to be, be, be stunning, Frog Frenzying, Swarming with Fury, and then Biting. Uh, optimally with BT procced. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. And then we also got one thing that's quite important to keep in mind, actually, is uh, Berserk Frenzy and Incarn. So, Berserk Frenzy is a, is, is a, is a bleed that kind of stacks up on your comp point generators as you're Berserking or Incarning. And because Incarn gives you 10 more seconds to Zerk, 30 seconds, you can stack this bleed very high, and it even goes AoE with Slash as well and Thrash. So, this one can be a big damage dealer um, in this build as well. 
We got Vein Ripper and Circle. One kind of main thing here is that when we're going single target, we're playing these two. Um, they kind of cancel each other out in a way because this one increases it by 25%, the duration. And this one makes it take 25% faster. And what happens is you, you end up with a bleed um, that is as long as normal bleed, like a normal rip. But it's going to be ticking faster. So basically, just get more damage in the same amount of time because there's going to be more ticks. Uh, so it's quite a nice combination. Energy wise, we got Soul of Forest, Moment of Clarity. And Omen, we got one of Tyler's energy as well. So energy is not really a problem in this build. We got Frantic Momentum as well for the haste. Um, so yeah, here's that build. Highly recommend this one. Again, guys, clone will depend. We got two different versions. Both versions will be linked under the stream uh, or under the video rather. You can check that out. Uh, but yeah, that's this build. And now I'm going to show you guys the cleave build. And then afterwards, we're going to go into the actual rotations of these builds and kind of how to play them. Okay, so now for the cleave heavy build. Uh, but I guess I'm also going to touch on like when to play which build, like when to play single target, when to play cleave. Uh, just right after we cover this build right here, uh, we're going to get into that. Uh, but yeah, so this cleave build right here, a little spoiler, this is kind of what I use in shuffle usually. You might have seen me play this in shuffle and been doing a bunch of damage. Also in BGs, it's a crazy build. If you can cleave multiple targets, it's pretty insane. This is like truly where Feral kind of gets unleashed in Dragonflight is when it can cleave many targets. And we're going to get into why it's so insane uh, in a moment here. Uh, but yeah, here's the build I can see. So one thing that I get a bunch of questions about is why we're going this pathing path for the boomy form, the, the surge. And the answer is we're not doing it for this. We're doing it for astral influence. The extra range, it's on all abilities, is insane when you cleave. It makes it like even if a team is not really stacking, you can still cleave them as a range on Wrath. You know, like the, the, the radius or whatever is very, very long. So... Um, or the diameter. Uh, it's very, very long. So, it's a great pick. Um, yeah, we're also kind of just kidding. Here's like basic stuff. We're getting renewal. We're getting pr protective growth. well hunt instincts. This stuff is pretty much the same as single target build. Just instead of getting this, we're getting this instead. But yeah, for this side, things change quite dramatically. So, as you see here, we're getting Primal Wrath and Double Clawed Rake. These two are pretty massive for cleaving. One thing that's quite different from, 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 from Shadowlands as well is just how much damage Rake does nowadays. Uh, one of the reasons is Infective Wounds. But yeah, Rake's just pumping very, very hard. Um, so, as you can see, we got the Primal Wrath, Double Clawed Rake, Tear Open Wounds. We got Apex, Predator's Craving. One thing that's, that's changing here from the single target build uh, is that we're going with Rip and Tear instead of Vein Ripper. So, with this build, like, one main thing, which we're going to get into more in the rotation part, is that you want to be spam reapplying Prime Wrath as much as possible. And it does crazy damage. So, that's a big thing. And therefore, because we're going to be spam reapplying, we're playing Rip and Tear, uh, because we don't want the bleeds to last for long, as we're going to be reapplying them anyways. So, we're playing Rip and Tear and Circle, and also Tear Open Wounds. So yeah, when you reapply a Prime Wrath, it's going to do instant damage because Tear Open Wounds, a quick bleed because of Rip and Tear, uh, and of course, there's damage from the Rip. And these Rips will be proccing Bites because of Apex Predator's Craving. And these Bites will buff your Bleeds because of the way Sabretooth works nowadays uh, right here. So yeah, it's like pretty crazy synergy between Biting and Bleeding as your Rips proc Bites, those Bites buff your Bleeds. And also the four set, which we're going to get into as well later, the new Fraudred four set um, gives you 10% more damage and rip as well after uh, using a finisher move, uh, which is also also very, very good. So yeah, like that's kind of like the main difference on these two builds. Both of them have Lunar Inspiration. I think Lunar is great. It got nerfed damage-wise a bit recently, uh, but it's still great to have a ranged comp point generator where it can kite away because, you know, as a Fraudred, a lot of time we are kiting away uh, and running. And being able to get comb points as we're running away has great value. One thing as well with Lunar uh, is that we can proc BT. Let me reload because I got a bug. Um, we can proc Blood Talents without ever actually being on the target uh, right here. So we can do, for example, a Moonfire, Slash, and Thrash from range. And that's going to proc BT. So yeah, being able to proc BT as well without ever even being on target has high value. And then, for example, get, getting comb points, and then jumping in, you know, stunning, and then doing a go. See, e even though Lunar got nerfed damage-wise, it's still really good uh, to have. 
But if there's a matchup where you think you have like 100% uptime, you don't like need that range, you can just stay in. Then you could also swap Lunar and, for example, grab, uh, you know, hard, hard line or something else too. Um, also definitely a possibility. But yeah, so the main difference though is this stuff right here. The Apex, Rip and Tear, Double Call to Rake, Prime Wrath. That's like the big cleave stuff. Uh, like for for an actual goal, it's the same thing. We got Frenzy, we got Swarm, we got BT uh, and 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 uh, Fury. So uh, that's fairly similar across both builds. But yeah, now I'm going to kind of talk about like when to play what build, and also like some slight variations we can do off this cleave build here as well. All right. So when it comes to like variations of this cleave build, there's you know, many slight variations, but the main thing I'd say is sometimes you want to be a bit more tanky, and you might want to skip your teachings for the crit and renewal. To get the flat 60% damage reduction right here. Uh, can be high value. Matted Fur. Uh, if you're going to train down like a whole game, uh, it has a very, very high value having that flat damage reduction. Um, but yeah, so that's like the main big thing. There's like slight variations. Kind of go, goes for, for, for all builds across the board. And that's, let's say, for example, Remove Corruption, right? This one is great to have into a Shaman for Hex, into a, a Affliction Warlock for Agony, or a Rogue for the Poisons. But it's not always going to be high value. Sometimes it's going to have no value in it. So uh, this is one thing too that, that can be changed. Uh, for example, for Typhoon. Typhoon can be great on certain maps. Like Blades of Jarena. Mugambala. Or just knocking like a priest out of a dome. Or a Deej out of darkness. Right? So Typhoon can have great value as well. Or even like Verdant Heart. Just to be even more tanky. Uh, See, so yeah, a general thing to kind of keep in mind is that. Rule Corruption is not always needed, and it's not always going to have value, depending on the matchup. Um, but it's going to be in the, the build right now. Um, so yeah, like that's like the main variation on this build. So now with that covered, we got we got to keep in mind that we have two main builds, right? we got the single target build and the cleave build. You know, they have slight variations, but like mainly two builds that we focus on. And now I'm going to answer the question, like when to use uh, what build. Okay, so let's start off with the cleave build. So, as you guys might have seen, the, the cleave build absolutely pumps. I'm going to show that too soon in the uh, rotation part. Uh, but the cleave build absolutely destroys. It's kind of where Feral truly gets unleashed. It's if you have good uptime and you cleave well, the damage is probably the highest in the game right now. It is absolutely insane. Uh, so, yeah, this build is great when it can get value out of it. Uh, but you can't always get value out of it, right? Let's say in 2v2, this build usually won't be the move. This, you're going to be two players only. They might be far apart. And then you can't really cleave them uh, well. And then this build won't be the move. But where this build truly, truly unleashes, I'd say, is in BGs, especially. Uh, but also in Solo Shuffle. I play this build to 2-4 in Shuffle on the beta. The only 2-4 uh, Feral on, on, on the beta. Um, and this build is absolutely insane. You cleave everyone. And Shuffle is kind of chaotic. Usually two, people are kind of stacked. By the way, one thing to keep in mind too is with Astral Influence, people don't have to be that stacked to cleave them because the range is very, very wide. As you see right here, it's a huge range on Prime Wrath. So yeah, even though teams are not quite stacked, you can still cleave. But of course, on like a major map and two, two players, it's going to be impossible to cleave. Um, but yeah, so this build is amazing in uh, situations where you can actually get cleave off. So yeah, BGs, Shuffle... When it comes to like normal 3v3, it's going to depend quite a bit on the comp you're playing. Uh, you know, if you're playing, let's say, Kitty Cleave and you're cleaving two melees, it could be great. But if you're facing a double caster and you're training down one caster to far away, then it's not going to be great. So in normal 3v3, it's going to depend a lot on the game plan you have, the comp you're playing, and the comp you're facing. So yeah, quite a, quite a few dependencies. Uh, but I say, if you think you can cleave multiple targets consistently, it's a good choice. And that's kind of it for the cleave build. Uh, now, so for the single target build, right here, I'm going to show the no clone version. Of course, sometimes you want clone as well. Um, when it comes to this build, the single target build, um, it's, I'd say, in 2v2, always to move almost. Unless you're facing like a demo or or a unholy DK, it can be good for, 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 the, for the pets. But in 2v2, I'd say it's pretty much always to move. Again, you can still cleave with this. You can still spread rake, spread rip. It's still good to do. When it comes to normal threes, this build is great. Uh, and definitely is the best build sometimes, depending on the matchup. 
Uh, I can give an example again. If you're facing, a, you know, let's say, a double caster or just any team you want to just train down one target on, um, it's going to be the best option, right? Or even a team that's just going to be hard to cleave, double cast on, 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 on total run, or any team that won't really be stacked at all and going to be very far apart, this build will be the go-to. Um, so, yeah. By the way, so here we have Heart of the Wild. Heart of the Wild has decent value. Long cooldown, gives you some more heals. This could be swapped out for, for example, uh, this right here. If you need the uh, the cleanse for Hex or Agony or whatever. We, we talked about that earlier. Um, so, yeah, Heart can be swapped out as well. So, keep that in mind. But, it's kind of nice to have, especially in, like, uh, double DBS 2v2, which I play a lot. But, guys, it's time to dive into the rotations right after we touch on Honor Talents now. Okay, so now for Honor Talents. So as you might have noticed so far, Feldrin Dragonflight, things depend on things. Your build, and so does your Honor Talents. So a good example of this is Thorns. Thorns is amazing, but not, it, it's not amazing into, into uh, casters, right? So if you're facing double melee or any melee really, that's gonna be hitting you. Thorns will be great if it's not a melee, then it's not going to be the move. And then we're probably going to go for Strength of the Wild instead. Um, lead of the Pack is like one that I pretty much always play. It's nice to have the crit, the heal. It's it's, it's uh, pretty much all around one that I have on the whole time. Uh, while Wicked Claws will depend a lot as well, depending on the copy play. Uh, Wicked Claws is a healing reduction, right? So if your teammate has, he uh, has healing reduction already, for example, a Warrior, a Hunter, then you don't need it. But if you're playing with, for example, a Warlock, uh, Alfred Lock, Demo has one, but Alfred Warlock, Red Paladin, or any spec that doesn't have it, like a Mage, then it's really good to have. So this will also depend. So, example, if I'm playing versus a caster team and I don't have a healing reduction on my team, I'll play something like this, uh, Strength, Leader, Wicked. If I'm playing against a melee team, but my teammate has a healing reduction, then I'll play with Thorns instead, right here. Then Strength, Leader, Thorns. If I'm facing a melee team, and I also need Wicked because I'm playing with like a uh, Mage, for example, and we need the heal reduction, then I'll play Wicked, Leader, Thorns. So those three combinations uh, th that I showed now are kind of like usually what you do, um, you know, in one way or the other. Sometimes if facing like a team where you don't need Wicked, you don't need Thorns, you could go something like this. Wound, Leader, and Strength of the Wild. Or even Savage Momentum. But that's more rare. Usually going to be uh, either wanting Thorns or Wicked. Uh, depending on the copy play. But that's our talents. And now, finally, uh, for the rotation part, we're going to start off with a single target build and then go into the cleave build rotations. Okay, now the rotation for the single target build. Again, it's not really single target build. We can still cleave. We can still spread a rake, spread a rip. It's good to do. Um, but yeah, so... Rotation wise though, so for opener, it's going to be fairly standard. It's going to be Fury and Stealth, Rake, Frail Frenzy, Swarm, Moonfire to proc BT, and then Rip, Shred, Bite. So in this, Cirque is off global, or Incarn is off global, right? The Incarn is going to be used right before Frenzy optimally, but can, can be right after as well, because uh, Frenzy actually also scales your uh, uh, Berserk Frenzy. They have the same name. It's a bit, a bit confusing, but yeah. Um, so, let's open up. So, Fury and Stealth, Rake, can just incarnate instantly, get the Swarm off, proc a BT, then you rip, then you shred, then you bite. We can proc a new BT now by doing a Thrash and a Slash. New bite, shred, bite again, and then you can Rake, you can reply Moonfire, new BT, bite again. So, as you guys can see here, by the way, is that I'm getting the first... Uh, three finish moves, we're getting three combos back instantly. This is because of your Tiger Tenacity, which gives you one, the next three finish moves, and then your Berserk, uh, or Incarn, gives you two. Which is pretty crazy, I see there, like, because you're getting one comp point, or you're spending uh, a finish move, you're getting two, uh, three comp points, you're getting one shred, you're getting five ready, you can instantly bite again. Uh, so there's a lot of finish moves happening. See so yeah, right there, like that's the opener. Kind of slow that down if you want to. Uh, you can also check down here, guys. You can see the uh, a sequence of what I'm using. Um, there's a bug, by the way, in Arena sometimes where BT will proc instantly, right? You're like, you'll, you'll, you'll rake and BT procs. In that scenario, you can just like rip before moon firing um, because BT will 
will already be 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 procced. Uh, so yeah, that's the opener, and now I'm gonna kind of talk about like just basic rotation stuff. All right, so now we're done the opener. We got full blaze rolling. Uh, now what, right? So I'll do it again and kind of like lead it into the the second go. Uh, so let's open again there. By the way, guys, one thing to keep in mind, which is very important, is when you're incarning or or, or circling. You got the Berserk Frenzy. This will stack on your generators. This bleed will be a big part of damage. This can last until the second go, pretty much. So yeah, keep that in mind. Like, using generators when you're circling will generate a massive bleed, uh, especially towards the end of it, because uh, it's going to be, be, be stacking up, uh, which can be a very, very big help in your uh, damage. So yeah, let's open up and uh, kind of just do it again. You know, we might Incarn or uh, Cirque right before Frenzy, right after. It's kind of fine doing both. Um... But yeah, let's open up right here. Get this going. Moon for the proc BT. Rip up. We're gonna shred. Bite. We're gonna proc a new BT. Thrash slash overcap like one comb point. And then new BT again. Something like this. New BT again. Bite. So at this point, we got full bleeds going. And that's your job mainly is, is man maintaining full bleeds. Keep proccing BTs. And you wanna be BT ripping one main between each frenzy. As well, uh, as the, it, it kind of works out. 45 is in cooldown. That's like two full Sunday R's. So two mames every one frenzy. Just want to keep maintaining bleeds until the next go. You can reapply a little bit early here. And now that frenzy's back, we're going to be wanting to have full, full bleeds going, going into the go. And then we can maim, frenzy, swarm, bite again. Maybe do a DR's done. And then maintain the moonfire. Keep bleeds going. And this is like pretty much it, you know, maintain bleeds and then lead into the go with full bleeds when you get your, your, your frenzy, fury, and, and swarm back. Of course, in an actual game, uh, you're going to be getting attacked, you're going to be getting trained down, you got to peel, heal, root. It's a lot more to it in, in an actual game. But like basic rotation wise, it's, it's maintaining bleeds and doing good ghosts with fury, frenzy, and swarm. If you can do that good, you're going to be doing great as a Feraldred and Rain, I think. But... As you're getting trained, right, you're gonna have to have to run a lot. So you might like do do the opener again, or or you might have full bleeds. Let's say a full full bleeds after opener. The rolling, you might start running, right? You can run, generate moonfires. I mean, calm points, moonfire, then get five, and then jump back in, and then do, do the go. Um, and then apply it again. You might root then, then run away, speed, spend moonfire again. This is kind of where, where Moonfire is great because you kind of keep running away and, and still getting comb points and still kind of being active in the fights. But the main thing is maintaining bleeds. And that's the biggest takeaway. So it's kind of like the, the base rotation. When it comes to your comp point generators, I get asked quite a bit, like, what's the best to use? So Slash is your cheapest generator, right? It costs 25 energy. Slash is great. Slash is kind of like n number one. Uh, also does more damage than Shred as well. Um, Moonfire and Rake are generators. They also apply a dot, so you want you want to maintain those at all time. Um, and also, great way to proc BT. Again, I said earlier, you can proc B BT from range by using Moonfire slash and Thrash like that as well. They want to maintain Moonfire and Rake. Thrash is very low prio. I think it's not bad to use. It does about the same damage as a shred. You can keep it up, but it's the last priority of all your dots. Uh, and it doesn't really really matter to use. Um, so yeah. That's kind of like the, the basic rotation for the Feral Druid single target build in Dragonflight. Um, and now, let's go talk about the Cleave build. I've changed location again to right here now for, for these dummies. Um, but yeah, so basically... The opener of the clear build is the same as the single target build, pretty much. We still Fury, Rake, Swarm, Frenzy. The difference is uh, when we're going to press Rip, we're probably going to press Prime Wrath instead if we can hit more than one target. Uh, it's going to be Prime Wrathing instead of Rip. So, if I open up, I go Rake, Frawl Frenzy, I proc the instant now, then we can skip the, the Moonfire. Then I Prime Wrath. Then I can start spreading Rake, spread Moonfire to get five compos again. Then Prime Wrath again. The Bites will proc from Apex, from your rips. Those Bites will buff your bleeds by 25%, right? So, like, those are a big part of your damage. You want to keep maintaining those rakes. Keep spending Bite procs. Maintain rake, rip uh, on the targets as well. As well as your rip. 
You can see the rip and tear is also pumping here as well. By procs again. And this will kind of be your base rotation. Uh, this is, you know, without using Incarn, of course, as you can see. Keep proccing BT, slash, Moonfire, Rake, proc the BT, by proc, spend it as well. And this will be a lot of damage. Keep using by procs. And then, of course, you know, your f Frenzy, Fury, and Swarm comes back as well, then you can do a go. And that goal will kind of be like a normal goal. So, let's say now you're cleaving a lot of targets. And your stuff is back for a go. Then you will just do a maim. Your Frail Frenzy. Instead of biting, you might Wrath. The only time you're really biting with this build is when you proc the bites. That is when you when you actually bite. Here again. And yeah, those bites will buff your bleeds because of the Sabertooth. And also the force that, that we're going to get. Um, you see right here on screen. Uh, which also buffs your rip after spending a finishing uh, move. So yeah, that's like the main thing there. Now I'm going to kind of show like with, with Incarn as well. So yeah, basically like main thing, maintain the rip. You want to spam reapply Prime Wrath. The reason we reapplied is because of tear up and wounds and uh, rip and tear. And these will do good damage as well. And also like these rips only last for for, for 9 seconds. So you want to keep reapplying them as it's going to fall off if not. Uh, and it might get succeed and then like there's going to be off and it's not going to be good. So just keep reapplying Prime Wrath. Spend the, the, the buy procs. And that's the main thing. Uh, when it comes to like maiming and doing ghosts, it's the same as single target. You want like pretty much do like two maims every one frenzy, uh, and then the ghost is similar. Just in, instead of biting with five, five comp points, you want to use your uh, uh, prime wrath instead, and that's like the main thing. But now for like uh, incarn go though. Okay, so now that we have the basic opener and rotation down for the clear build, I kind of like show a full go, a full um, opener into a go. With Incarn, uh, and then also leading into Second Frenzy. So, if we're opening up, we're going to be doing the same opener again. Rake, Frail Frenzy, we're going to Incarn 2, proc to BT, Primer Raff, spread the Rake now, new Primer Raff, buy procs 2, keep that in mind. Uh, Moonfire here. If you do like some Primer Raffs without proc and BT, that's fine. You're not going to proc it for every single one, but you want to try to. Uh, just keep reapplying it, buy proc again. By the way, so your Incarn will give you self, and also your Meld uh, will give you a self, and this will give you a double Rake stun, as it's going to be uh, double because of double called Rake, like this right here. So, so stuns both, keep reapplying it. Try and maintain the Rake and Moonfire on as many things as possible. Spend the Bite procs, proc BT, that's the main thing. And now you can see we'll get Frenzy back, then the same thing again. We're going to do a Maim, Fury, Frail Frenzy, Swarm, New Prime Wrath, spend the buy proc, and that is the main thing. When it comes to fear, by the way, because we're playing Predator, when you're cleaving, like, in an actual arena game, there might be, like, random pets dying, um, and, 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 and uh, yeah, pets mainly. Uh, BM, Demo, Unholy, but, you know, like a Psy Fiend or whatever. Things that die that have bleeds going, or things you kill, will reset the cooldown of your fury. So, so in a game, you can often, like, use Fury a lot, and can have crazy uptime on Fury, um, by doing this. As it lasts for 15 seconds with, uh, Predator, which is a long time. So, yeah. Keep that in mind. If you can, Risa Fury, and then just have it up the whole time, pretty much. And that's, like, the main, um, rotation for the, 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 the cleave build. Basically, just maintain as many bleeds as possible on many targets. Of course, guys, in an actual arena, you're going to get trained down. It's going to be a way harder to actually do. Um, but if you can get this down, practice it a lot, and truly get the value out of Cleave, you can notice that it's insane in BG, Shuffle, and uh, all that stuff. So yeah, now we've covered talents, different builds, rotation. Let's get into some gear and stats. And then also some general tips, and then in the end, some uh, comps to play in Dragonflight. Okay, so for the stat prio, it's going to be Verse, Mastery, Haste, Crit. We're going to, like, end up with, like, decent amount of crit anyways because of, uh, like, Kairos teaching. Right here, it gets 6% six, six crit in cat form. Um, and then we got also Lead of the Pack, 5% crit. And then also, we're going to get into it, the Crafted Boots also have crit on them. Uh, so, yeah, crit will be decent even though we're not really going for it. And it's not bad because when we crit, we get more comp points because of Prim Primal Fury. And also our four set also works with the crit as well on our uh, generators. Uh, but yeah, the general prior was going to be verse, mastery, haste, crit. 
this practically means that we're going to uh, we're going to go for verse mastery on all the pieces we can and then haste verse on the pieces that we can't from the conquest vendor because i'm on uh live right now and the season doesn't start before a couple days i can't actually show that right now here but I got the armory dressing room where I can only show uh, not the rings and stuff, but I can show the, the main gear. So we're going to go for like verse mastery everywhere we can. Because we're also going to be using four set, we're also going to, you know, not be able to control all, all, all the stats there either. Uh, but yeah, on all, on all the pieces we can control, it's going to be verse mastery where we can and haste verse where we can't. So right here, we got four set on the gloves. It's, it's, it's going to be uh, haste verse. We got haste verse on the waist. Verse mastery on the legs, haste verse on the feet, the weapon, uh, verse mastery. I'm actually not sure in live if we can get a verse mastery pull arm, but it says here we can. So if we can, we're gonna go for that. If we cannot, we're gonna go haste verse, haste verse on the waist, and then uh, the chest, shoulders, and head are also gonna be four set. We're gonna be fixed stats. We can't really change that. So yeah, force is gonna be on the hands, head, shoulders, and chest. And then we get verse mastery on the legs. For the rings, we're gonna go for one ring with verse mastery and one ring with haste verse. For the trinkets, we're gonna go with one medallion and one insignia. And the cloak is gonna be verse mastery, and the neck is gonna be verse mastery as well. Uh, so yeah, that's all the gear we're gonna go for uh, right there. When it comes to enchants, we're going to be enchanting uh, mainly just like go for the uh, verse. On the rings, of course, we're not have kind of like low quality. They were kind of cheaper. But yeah, verse on the rings. Uh, Planes runners breeze on the uh, feet. On the legs, I think reinforced armor kit is really good. But there are a couple ones I might put them up on, on screen right now that might be worth looking into as well. The weapon, let's get. Our, uh, we're gonna grab Sophic devotion. Procs a lot of ton of stats is really good. Uh, we're gonna go for the speed on the wrist as well. You can go for like more stamina here as well uh, instead of speed um, on the cloak and stuff. But in my opinion, I think full speed is great. So I'm grabbing speed on the, the, the bracer and also on the cloak. On the chest, I think waking stats is great. So I'm going to go for that. And then on the neck, we can actually get three gems on the neck uh, by getting this gem enchant right here. I only have two right now. It's a bit cheaper, by the way. We're still, you know, it's not, not out yet. On, on the cloak scar, we're going to have uh, the best of possible. But yeah, there we're going to go for three enchants on the neck, uh, which means three gems. And then we're going to have the verse master gems uh, right here. We're going to use those. So that's the plan when it comes to gear. Uh, I'm going to have armory linked, by the way, under the video. So I can kind of keep up to date with me and the gear I'm using on armory uh, as he starts. Um, and then also when it comes to crafted pieces, we're going to be crafting the infurious foot wraps of indemnity. You can just make this through craft ordering. Uh, it's quite nice to have. It gives 5% extra C reduction on your tr tricky bonus. Um, and, you know, crit verse. Not the best stats, but not the worst either. A lot of verse in them. And then we're also going to be creating this head right here. Um, this is a crafted piece as well on the head. It has verse mastery. Scales up to the same eye level as Conquest Gear. Uh, 424. And, yeah, the stats are bis. You know, the 1% damage uh, increase is not huge. But it's better than nothing. So, yeah, we're going to go for that as well. Okay, quick note, I just want to be clear about this. This head, the crafted head, is very, very good right now in the start because it's going to be high eye level. Once we get four set, we're going to have four set on, on the head, shoulders, chest, and hands, which means, of course, we can't have this head. But yeah, four starter is going to be great. Once we actually get four set, we might not use it. Check my army on that later on uh, and, or, or ask my stream as that is still kind of to be cited, uh, to be decided. Uh, but yeah, four starter is going to be great for sure, though. So uh, definitely make it in early season. Yes, now that we kind of have all the gameplay stuff down, the gear, the rotation, the talent builds, all that stuff, we're going to have something to play, right? Some comps. Unless you want to play Shuffle, then you just queue solo queue, which I'm going to do a lot. But yeah, if you want to be playing Arena, there's going to be some comps you can play, right? And I'm thinking Jungle is going to be great still. Hunter, Feraldred Priest is going to be great, I'm sure. Kitty Cleave. I think Arms Kitty might be better than Fury Kitty now, as Fury is getting nerfed. But that will see. Just But yeah, Warrior Feral and Generals should be good as well. Uh, some comps that I barely played in Shadowlands, but I think will be very, very good in Dragonflight is... Uh, yo, these animals, by the way, are making peeping sounds. Um, is Shadow Priest for Aldrud, healer, uh, and threes, but but, but, but uh, twos as well. I think Shadow Priest for Aldrud is going to be very, very deadly across twos and threes. And also Affliction Warlock for Aldrud is going to be great as well. These two comps, 
I'm probably the most excited for. Uh, and they're going to be really, really fun as well. Uh, so, yeah. i say those two. So, it's kind of like threes and twos. Um, but, yeah, in, in two of these specifically, Shadow Priest for Eldred, Alpha for Eldred, uh, for, for double DPS. Even the Hunter for Eldred could be good too. Um, if you want to play with a healer in twos, I think Holy Priest is a great option still. Evoker for Eldred, I, I assume, is going to be good as well. Uh, you can kind of play with any healer, but usually with a priest, uh, you're going to be matched up uh, the best. Historically speaking, and also from what I've seen and and, and played, um, and I kind of like talk a bit about like general frail tips as well. So as a frail druid, I just want to say, keep in mind that you are the most mobile class in this game. Your mobility is one of the best parts of being a frail druid. Kite away, right? Use your mobility. Don't tank damage unnecessarily. If you got a tank damage and you can't get away, be bear form. If you're in calf form, you'll be very, very squishy, which we'll probably find out very quickly if you're new to Pharaoh. Uh, you have to use bear form well, uh, especially if you're getting trained by melees uh, and you can't can't escape. Tank the damage in bear form is going to help you a lot, and it's going to help your healer a lot with uh, keeping you alive. So yeah, and also focus on bleed, guys. Focus on bleed of time. I talked about this earlier as well. As you're cutting away, as you're sitting bare form, optimally you have bleeds up and bleeds are doing the work for you. As you're kind of doing other stuff. Of course, you can't always do this. Sometimes you're going to sit bare form for a long time. Sometimes you have, to, you have to cut away for a long time. But yeah, focus on bleed up time as well. And uh, line up your ghosts with a frenzy, fury, and swarm. And I think guys, we're going to do good. If you can focus on those things, practice. Uh, be patient with yourself. For also a very, very fun spec to play. And I think it's uh, definitely worth learning. So, uh, sorry if the guys have been scattered array, uh, around. You know, things depend a lot. For Eldred, your builds depend a bit. Your honor talents d depend. Uh, a lot of things depend on things. But hopefully, it was pretty clear in this video what to do. If you have any questions in Discord, you can ask there on my stream. And I'll see you guys in the next one.